garden is waking up. Spring is here. And I only have two weeks left until my hiking trip. Number 93. Soil and Seeds. First days of May 2024. We leave for a week at the end of May. This puts a deadline on a lot of my garden projects. If you're new here, know this. I hate deadlines. I'm not good with deadlines. They make me nervous. Despite all my neighbors collecting toilet paper rolls for me, I didn't have enough to start seats in. I was also almost out of trays from my mom, so I decided to try soil blocking. I'd ordered a cheap blocker online, I hated the thing. But I had neither the money nor the time to wait for a good quality original from the UK. So I asked my husband to print me some soil blockers for testing. If this worked well, I'd save up for a good quality set for next year. Soil blocking is a way to start seeds without trays. You make compacted soil blocks instead. Usually the presses are metal and you make more blocks at once, but this is a trial. You mix water and soil and then you essentially build a sand castle from soil. The right ratio of water and sand, um, soil, and the right amount of pressure are all you need. I think this part is a lot easier with a proper unit. They have handles that let you press better. But this barely functional tiny unit was enough to convince me of soil blocking. Next year, we'll do this properly. Time to plant some small seeds into these tiny blocks. My husband and I both struggle with respiratory issues, so I'm growing some mulling for tea. I also planted some stevia. Sorry for the bad camera angles. The living room is the only place where I have the space to leave this out for a few days. Making the blocks is exhausting for the fingers, so I spread it over the first days of May. Tray after tray filled up until the living room was covered in not yet growing things. I'm very curious to see how the soil blocks hold up, literally and figuratively. As I didn't want any peat in my soil, I sifted by potting mix to make these. The larger block size had finished printing. I'd need that once the tomatoes were ready for potting up. In the meantime, I made medium blocks and planted all the larger seeds in them. Three cantaloupes and six watermelons. Let's see how they grow. I also planted quite a few nasturtiums. Their crumbly seeds are one of my favorites. For hours, I sifted soil and adjust the right amount of water or more soil and pressed blocks. Supposedly, seedlings are happier in soil blocks. Their roots won't grow in circles when they hit air. Instead, more dense roots form that are ready to grow once they hit soil when planted. With my tiny scale set up in the living room, this was a lot of work. 
I hope it was worth the struggle. I decided to use the last plastic tray for lettuces, kale and some chard for a neighbor. I really didn't like working with trays at all. If the blocks hold up, I'll do this differently next year. There's still quite a bit of usable wood in the garden. Once I've made it through the spring planting, I have plans. The larger pieces will stay in the garden for various projects, but I want to build seed trays from the rest. But first, let's finish this planting marathon. I use the seed bottles as temporary labels. Labeling is one of the downsides of seed blocking. I can't use the wooden sticks easily because they fall over in the gaps. Tape might have been good for labeling. I will be growing three varieties of corn this year, all three heritage varieties, so no sweet corn. I want to grow a traditional three sisters bed with corn, beans, and squash. Sweet corn puts more of the energy into the sweet kernels, less into a strong stem that can support beans. The black corn is from a small farm in southern Europe. The green corn and the machete de peru are all saved from plants grown in the area. I got them at a seed library. I only have five kernels each of the green and Peruvian corn, so I planted a lot of black corn. We had the chance to try Inca cucumbers last year, and both of us were big fans, so I saved the seeds. I have never grown any of the things I planted here. Let's hope countless hours of watching and reading help. Four to eight days later. Didn't take long for the first seeds to sprout. The first tray of tiny seeds was starting to show some growth. Almost everything is already up, albeit tiny. The lettuces, kales and chard are growing in exceptionally well. Nothing on the peas yet, though. None of the peas, beans and corn are fully up yet, but it has only been four days since they went in. The tomatoes and peppers seem happy in their tiny soil blocks covered in what I sifted out. The leaves of the blueberry are losing the cold weather red. Spring really is here. So long and thanks for being here. If you want to support the channel, go to rootsandcalluses.com support. The link is also in the description.